everyone and welcome to my channel babbling books if it's your first time here my name is elaine if you are a returning viewer thank you very much for clicking on my video again um this is just going to be sort of a casual conversation and i'm going to talk about some of the books that i've bought more recently i think I, there's about 19 or 20 of them um i'm filming this really late in the evening. Um, my mom and dad took um, our kids camping and I've been meaning to make this video for a couple of days, but I really just wanted to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with my husband, um, you know, because it's the summer and, you know, the kids are home, you know, for the majority of the time. Um, and we had a really good weekend. We went and saw my in-laws, um, dropped the kids off with my parents. Um, we tried a new Latin restaurant. We watched like four movies. Um, we finally watched a Megan. My husband wasn't really impressed. I thought it was entertaining. Um, but you know, it was, it was okay. Um, but the, the last one we watched was Renfield, which is sort of like a horror comedy. And it's, <laughs> it's about Renfield who, um, is, um, Dracula's servant, his familiar, realizes that he's in a toxic relationship and wants to um basically break up with Dracula. It was really really funny. Um it had some good action in it. Um but I like comedy horrors and so does my husband, so we really really enjoyed that one. Um but anyway, my husband's got to go to work tomorrow. Um and so we went to bed early and I decided, you know, this was the perfect time to film. Um, hopefully the lighting isn't too bad. I've got like every light in this room on, so hopefully it's not too dark. Um, and I'm coming to you with my hair up in a clip and I'm already in my pajamas and my face is, all the makeup's washed off. Um, so just an informal video. Um, so to start with, we have The Obsession. So I saw, when I saw the cover, and I read it. I didn't even read the synopsis after that. I just immediately was like, I'm getting this book. So it says, boy meets girl, boy stalks girl, girl gets revenge. I thought that sounded like an amazing premise. Um, so like I said, this is a YA thriller. Um, it's written by Jesse Q. Satanto. And I am really looking forward to reading this because I think it's going to be fantastic. And then we have Dress Coded. So this is by Carrie Firestone. And this is a middle grade book. So a young girl who is either seventh or eighth grade, I'm not sure. She is tired of the way the school treats the female students, how they are constantly nitpicking what the girls wear, taking them out of class, making them miss part of their education because of their clothes. And this girl decides that she's had enough of it. And she starts a podcast where she interviews her, um, the other female students and asks them to tell about a time or multiple times they were dress coded and how it impacted their lives and their education and their mental health. And I think that is just a fantastic premise for a book. It's a wonderful message. Um, that is a situation that I have very little tolerance for, both as a woman and as a parent. Um, so I think this is going to be fantastic and I'm going to probably end up keeping it for my daughter when she's older. And then we have The Game by Lindsay Miller. So this is a YA, I'm going to say it's a horror, but thriller may be more accurate. I'm not quite sure yet. The seniors at this high school play a game every year and it's called Assassin. And you basically have to survive the night and they hunt each other using like a paintball or um, water guns. And this year, somebody is actually killing the kids who were playing. So they literally actually at this point have to survive the night. Um, so I thought that sounded like it was going to be um, an entertaining read. <laughs> so this one is the Campbell Lake Summer Camp Massacre, a horror B book. 
by Lewis Stone. So I found this on a BuzzFeed list and I was really intrigued by the idea of a B story because I like B horror movies. So this is basically a group of um, teenagers who are counselors at a camp end up being massacred. <laughs> and it just reminded me a lot of um, like Friday the 13th. So I thought I would give it a try because it sounded, you know, fun. Um, and then we have The Science of Nutrition by Rhiannon Lambert. And it's debunk the diet myths and learn how to eat well for health and happiness. So my husband and I recently <clears throat> switched over to being pescatarians. Um, and it's been about two months. And I think we were like so many, um, probably millions of people that there are so many mis mixed messages now about nutrition. Um, you know, you have uh, keto, um, which a lot of, you know, and, and this is not judgmental. I'm not trying to judge in any form or fashion the way other people eat, but you know, you'll watch or read one thing about keto and then you'll read something else about how, you know, keto is going to lead to high cholesterol and very poor health. Um, and then you read, you know, the only way is to do a raw plant-based. And I mean, there's just so much information out there and it can be incredibly confusing. So I wanted to find a book that focused on the science of nutrition, how your body reacts to food. Um, and that's how I came across this book. Now I've already read a few pages and I think this is excellent because the author focuses on the facts, the way your, um, blood sugar and your insulin reacts to carbs and proteins and fibers and exactly what are those, you know, what is a protein? What is a fiber? And she does a fantastic job. And one of the things I did find very useful in here was a chart about complete proteins. Um, but I just think that this book so far cuts through a lot of the BS that you see, especially on social media, about what is healthy and what is not healthy. And if that is something that, um, you know, you're interested in, I think this is the best book that I have ever come across so far. But this isn't a book review, it's a book haul. But I'm, the few pages I've read about this have already made me a big fan of that book. Um, and then we have Pandemic by Sonia Shaw. So this is basically a study of tracking the different contagious diseases through humanity. Now it's not that big of a book, um, when you take into consideration how many different kind of contagious diseases there are. So I'm not sure if the author is just going to gloss over all of the um, different diseases or if she's going to focus on just maybe three or four or five of them. But I, I thought this was pretty interesting. I like reading um, about um, the Black Death, the Plague, and I've read, you know, books that focused on... Um, uh, like the pan, the different, I wanted to say pandemic, but yes, the pandemics that would like wipe out entire towns, um, like old Western towns, um, you know, here in America. Um, so I just, I just find that topic interesting. And then we have The Cabin by Natasha Preston. So this is about a group of teens that are staying what I think is the weekend at a cabin. And when they wake up in the morning, some of the teenagers have been murdered and the other teens are very certain that one of them is a killer. Um, so just another YA horror. And then we have The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. So this is, was it Newberry? Yes, this is a winner of the Newberry Award and a modern Puffin classic. So 16 strangers. I've all gotten together to hear the reading of Mr. Weston's will, or excuse me, Westing's will. And it seems like they have to compete in some sort of a game to find out 
which one of them is going to inherit this man's fortune. And somebody starts killing them. And it had a, a vibe that kind of reminded me of the Clue movie. And so I thought that that sounded pretty cool because that's one of my favorite movies. And then we have This is Shakespeare by Emma Smith. And this is a nonfiction book. Um, and I'm hoping that this will help me enjoy reading Shakespeare's plays. I like listening to them. I like the movie adaptations of his plays, but I have tried to sit down and just read his plays and I don't in, I don't enjoy it. I, I start to feel sort of lost. I don't feel that way when I watch his plays, but I feel that way when I read them. So I'm hoping this book can offer some insights and um, sort of like uh, getting, you know, tutoring in, in Shakespeare. Um, so I'm really hoping that that's going to be a book that I can um, connect with because that's, I would like to be able to enjoy Shakespeare. Um, and then we have The Time Traveler's Guide to Regency England by Ian Mortimer. I love the Regency era and I want to say this is the fourth book that I will have read about the Regency era. Um, and I'm also hoping that this will focus on all of the classes, lower class and middle classes, and not just the upper echelon and the gentlemen and the gentlewomen. Um, but I've heard a lot of really good things about this series. And if I like this one, I will probably get the other time periods as well. Oh, Poetry Collection by Maya Angelou. So, And I Still Rise is one of my all-time favorite poems. Um, if you have never watched um, Maya Angelou read, uh, I mean, excuse me, recite her poem, And I Still Rise, I highly recommend that you do. It is, it just hits you right in the chest. I get goosebumps. I think it is so impactful. Um, I think that my Angela would have been, it would have been phenomenal to have had the opportunity to meet her. Um, but, you know, she left us with a lot of very beautiful works. So I'm hoping that there are quite a few other poems in there that I will enjoy just as much. And this one is Taste Like Candy by Ivy Tholen. So this is a, another YA horror. Um, a... At this high school, every year, the girls that are about to be seniors, which is the last class in high school, they are um, going to participate in a scavenger hunt that the senior girls who are about to graduate put on um, for the girls that are taking their place. And this year, the scavenger hunt is taking place in a closed carnival. So the girls show up to this carnival at night to um, take place in the scavenger hunt and somebody starts killing them or something starts killing them. Um, so I love the idea of this taking place in a carnival and I will be honest, I was really drawn to this book also because I really like this cover. Um, I like hot pink and black and I, I love that beautiful purple color. And then we have The Prettiest by Bright Young. So this, oh, excuse me, not Bright, Bridget. So this is a um, another middle grade book. So these girls um, are eighth graders and somebody publishes a list and posts it on social media listing the top 50 most attractive girls in their school. And a few girls, a group of girls, they decide that they are not going to just stand silently by while they're being treated this way. Um, so once again, this is another middle grade book where I really think I'm going to enjoy the message and that I hope that um, my daughter's a little older that she might want to read it. And then we have Campfire by Sean Sorrells. So a girl and her family and some friends are camping and their guide tells them um, an urban legend about 
the woods that they are camping in. And when they wake up in the morning, some of them have been killed and they have these antlers carved into their foreheads, which is part of the urban legend. So these people are trying to survive and get out of the woods while something or someone is pursuing them. Um, so I thought that sounded really thrilling and, and frightening. And then we have The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. So I'm going to make sure I have the right book. Yes. Okay. So two best friends um, are going to different colleges. And so they've been away from each other for a year, um, over a thousand miles apart. And it's created a lot of distance in their relationship. So they decide that they're going to take a three-day hike and sort of try to, you know, bond again. And it doesn't specifically say what happens, but it says, um, simmering tensions lead to a detour off the trail and straight into a waking nightmare and then into something far worse. So I don't know if that means that, you know, monsters are after them or aliens or a hillbilly family is, you know, gonna kill them and eat them. Um, you know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm, I'm not sure. But I once again love the idea of them being stranded in the woods trying to survive. Okay. So this is the first book in a trilogy by Maggie Stifader. Um, the trilogy is called the Dreamer Trilogy. So if you are familiar with Maggie Stifader, she I think is best known for her Raven Cycle series. Um, I love that series. I'm actually listening to some of them on audio right now. I have read her books, that series multiple times. I just, it's one of my top favorite young adult series. My favorite character from that series is Ronan. This series, I believe, focuses mainly on Ronan. I know the first and second books uh, are already out for this trilogy. Um, I have put off reading this for years because I am terrified that I'm going to be disappointed. Um, because not only do I love her previous series that this is based off of, it's also focusing on my favorite character. Um, but I am determined to read this in August and I'm just crossing my fingers that I am at least going to like it. Hopefully I will like it as much. So I'm very nervous about reading that book. I know that's silly, but um, this one is called I'll Never Tell by Abigail Haas. So um, I think this one is probably a, a new adult. I don't think it's YA. The characters, I believe, are college students. So um, these girls are on a spring break vacation in Aruba. And Anna, who is the main character, her best friend is murdered. And the police are perfectly fine with arresting Anna. And she realizes that they have no intention of trying to solve this murder. They just want to close the case. So she realizes that she has to solve this murder herself or she's going to be going to prison for this murder. Um, so I really like that idea. It sounded very um, high tension. Um, this is the only um, graphic novel that, I, um, that I've purchased recently. This one is a YA. And... It's called Squad, and uh, <laughs> this girl is new to this high school, and she wants to be a part of the popular girl clique. But what she doesn't know is that the popular girls are werewolves. So I just thought that premise sounded really cool. Um, I like the artwork. It reminds me a lot of my, um, my old Barbie coloring books from when I was a kid. And I like the author, the way the author draws the art. It's very sharp almost. And um, I like the use of color in the, especially the scenes that have um, a black background. There's a lot of pop 
which I really enjoy. Um, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And the last book. So this is Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow. I saw this book on Jen Campbell's channel. If you have never watched um, any of Jen Campbell's videos, you really should. She is one of my all-time favorite booktubers, and um, I probably watch four or five of her videos a week. Um, I watch her most recent ones, and then I go back, and I sort of get the, I watch the videos from some of them from years and years ago because I just enjoy her videos so much. Um, I'm going to link her channel down below. Um, so this book focuses on um, multiple generations um, of a family that I believe focuses a lot in the South, especially um, with the title. Yeah, Memphis, so that's in Tennessee. And it focuses a lot on generational trauma as well as how racism has impacted their lives, um, familiar relationships between these women. Um, so those are all things that I love. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one as well. So that is it. That is all the books that I've purchased recently. I will not be doing um, another book haul video for a while um, with school starting in about two weeks. Our main focus is going to be school supplies and back to school clothes and shoes and those kinds of things. So um, I'm just going to try to work through what I already have um, on my TBR shelf. And um, I'm going to be putting another video up probably in the next few days. Um, maybe I may even film it tomorrow. Um, my wrap up for July. Um, I think that's going to be a really good one. I had a great reading month. Um, I, I enjoyed the majority of everything that I read. Um, I had some five-star reads, um, some new authors that I'd never read before. And, um, so I'm really, I'm thinking that, you know, that's going to be a pretty good video. So, uh, check back in, you know, the next couple of days and that is it. So thank you. Bye.